Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Neshar RIS-5 single board computer. RIS-5 is a free and open instruction set architecture, or ISA, that provides an alternative to the closed ISAs used in today's x86 and ARM CPUs. And specifically, what we have here with the Neshar is a RISC-V development board able to run a full version of Linux, and it's based on an all-winner D1 system on a chip. So, let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Neshar SBC. The board is from Allwinner and branded as you can see as AWOL, which I'm pretty certain stands for Allwinner Open Learning. AWOL certainly has a very useful website that I've been reading with the help of Google Translate and which offers a great deal of support for the board. What we have here is one of several different Neshar SBC bundles sold via the Cypede store on AliExpress. And specifically, this is the standard bundle for which I paid $112, which is about £85 before taxes. So, let's open it up. Nothing is sealed, it's nice and straightforward, even for me. And uh, there we are. And look, in the top of the box, there is a label which gives us the usernames and passwords for the accounts that have been set up in the Debian version of Linux, which is provided in this kit to run on this piece of RISC V hardware. Very exciting. And uh, down here I can spot, there is the micro SD card in this little bag. We will of course be trying this out later in the video. And also down here we've got what cables need to work I'm sure with this, which is the power adapter. This is a 5 volt 2 amp power adapter. This I'm pretty certain is a TTL cable for console work for accessing the board via serial. And also down here we've got some standoffs for, for mounting the board nicely to stand off a surface. But of course, the most important thing here has to be this, which must be the SBC itself. Everything is beautifully presented. So let's uh, open this thing up and, uh, oh look, on the side there is a GPIO diagram. That's rather handy, isn't it? Great attention to detail here. So let's take out this bit of foam and there we are, a brand new single board computer, a RISC-V single board computer, no less. And you might be looking at this and thinking, that's a very familiar sized form factor. It is. This board I know is 85 by 56 millimeters. So if we take it and put it down over here, we can see that it's clearly exactly the same size as a Raspberry Pi, connected in different places. But clearly, the Neshar is a RISC-V SBC with a Raspberry Pi form factor. And it's just a little bit smaller physically than the Vision 5 RISC-V single board computer that I reviewed on the channel a few weeks ago. So, let's now turn to the Neshar's hardware specification. And as I indicated in the introduction, it's based on an all-winner D1 system on a chip. And the D1 is the first RISC-V SoC from all-winner, and contains a single 1 GHz T-head Shantae C906 64-bit RISC-V CPU core. T-head is a subsidiary of Alibaba and is one of many organizations now designing RISC-V processors. T-head also supports the Neshar SBC via its open chip community, so this really is a RISC-V SBC with a wealth of organizational might behind it. Returning to the SoC, in addition to its C906 CPU core, the D1 has a 600 MHz Hi-Fi 4 DSP, or Digital Signal Processor, and which indicates that like many other RISC-V boards, the Neshar is very much focused towards IoT. On either side of the SoC, we then find one of the board's RAM chips. We've got one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM on this board, and we also find a wireless module which offers 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. On the main lung edge, we find a USB-C connector for powering the board, and next to that, a full-size HDMI connector that supports 1080p at 60 frames a second and 4K at 30 frames a second. And we've also got a 3.5mm audio jack. 
And then in the middle of these connectors, we've got something that at first glance you'd think might be a camera connector, but it isn't. This is a microphone connector. So what plugs in here is a microphone array, which you can add to the Nezar if you want to use it for voice controlled applications. On the first short edge, we find a gigabit Ethernet socket and then two USB ports, both of which are USB 2, one being type A, as you can see, one being type C, which is also OTG. And yes, it is quite unusual to find a type C USB port that only operates at USB 2 rather than USB 3 speeds. Spinning 90 to the second long edge, we find a 40 pin GPIO connector and also a debug connector for connecting to the NASAR via a serial console interface. Finally, on the second short edge, we find what looks like and is a MIPI DSI connector, a display serial interface connector. And in fact, this is actually DSI plus TP plus touch panel. So you can connect a touch display to this particular connector on the NASAR. And it looks like someone's done this already. This has been raised up. Clearly it's been used in action. Let's put it down at a place to keep the board content. If we flip the SBC over like that, you'll see there's not a lot to see underneath, but there is the second RAM module there. And we can see here the board is labeled as having a gigabyte of memory. It's worth noting, I think there were different variations available. There was a half gigabyte version available in initial testing and Apparently there is a two gigabyte version not currently being sold, but it is possible to have a two gigabyte version apparently of this board. And then finally, we've also got here a micro SD card slot. So I'll bring in the card that came in the kit and slot it in there like that, which means we should now be able to connect this board up and to see how it performs. So I've now got the board all connected up and powered up. As you can see, we've got a very bright little red LED on down here, which you can hopefully see on video. And we're connected to HDMI and to ethernet and out here to both a keyboard and a mouse via this USB 2 connector. And since I spoke to you last, I've been reading up on the board a lot and I've discovered that the USB-C connector here, the USB 2 one I mentioned in the last segment of the video, this is only for use as OTG. So if you want to connect peripherals to this board, like a mouse and a keyboard, they all have to go through this uh, single type A USB 2 port over here. So if we go across to the board's HDMI output, this is what we get, we get black. Well, in fact, we don't even get black. The only reason we're seeing black here is because my video mixer outputs black if it's not receiving any HDMI input, which it isn't. There is absolutely nothing coming out of the HDMI port here on this board, even though it's been powered up and running for quite some time. And I don't think this is a hardware problem. We've got a nice little red LED on. The uh, SOC is getting very slightly warm. Something's going on inside there and a little RISC-V brain of this board. The issue I think is simply that the version of Linux supplied with this board is intended for use with an LCD display connected to the MIPI CSI connector down here, not with an HDMI monitor. And I can prove to you everything is okay. If we go across to my laptop, here we are, where I've been scanning for IP addresses on my local network. And I'm pretty certain this one here is the Nezar SBC. So if we go across to PuTTY, we should be able to connect to it headlessly via SSH. So let's try that. Here's our screen. Do we want to do it? Yes, Windows, we do. I trust things on my own network. Pretty certain it's going to be all right. There we are. We'll log in as a SIPED like that and enter the password L-I-C-H-E-P-I -E like that. Cross your fingers. There we are, we've clearly logged into the Nezar SBC. Look, it says RIS-564 up here. We must be on the right machine. And clearly we're running a Debian Linux as we expected. Shall we run a couple of commands? Let's do an LS BLK, list block devices. And yes, there we are. We've got one device, which is about 30 gigabytes. That's our micro SD card. That's roughly what we expected. And uh, shall we try to run HTOP like that? Oh, look, it works. There we are. This is very encouraging. Clearly, we've got one CPU, which is, again, what we expected. One core in the D1. And we've got about a gigabyte of memory. This all lines up, doesn't it? So we're headlessly accessing the NetRSBC without any problems at all. 
And if what you want to do with a board is to access it headlessly, then this is all you need. But uh, personally, I would like to get a graphical desktop running. So I'm now going to do a lot more searching around in all the places online that provide support for this board. And hopefully I'll be able to find a micro SD card image that outputs its display over the HDMI connector. Greetings. Here I am back again. And guess what? We've now got HDMI output. And we're booting into a Debian operating system with a desktop, but not the same installation of Debian that comes on the SD card supplied with the board. And uh, here we are at the login screen. I need to put in my uh, username, which is going to be root, and the password, which is going to be RV boards, like that, for reasons which become clear in a second. And here we are arriving on the desktop, which, as you can see, has got a desktop background that says RV boards. And the reason for this is that there are currently two distributors of the Nizar RIS-5 SBC. And these are Cypede and RV boards. And the bundle I've got here is from Cypede, but there's also bundles available from RV boards. And both Cypede and RV boards maintain their own Debian distributions for the uh, Nizar SBC. And I've discovered that the version from RV boards defaults to outputting via HDMI. It's the one that if you read around in all the communities, many people seem to go for. And it's working very nicely indeed. Here we are running Debian on a RISC-V piece of hardware. I do find this really cool. If we go down to the menu, you'll see there's not a lot down here. This is a development board with a development image after all, but there's various ones of the usual accessories. There's quite a few things listed under Debian, lots of folders here, but not a lot of things actually inside them. But there are things around here if you need to, to use them. There's a little games folder, but sadly I can't get that particular game to run. We've also got down here, though, internet. We can go to the web. Let's boot up a web browser. Always good to try that. Come on, web browser, can you boot up on this computer? I'm sure it can. Let's give it encouragement. Web browser, keep booting. Oh, it did it. It's listening to us. We haven't got a microphone board attached, but it's still listening to us. And as you might be able to see at the top there, it's going to the Explaining Computers website. And it's arrived. We can visit the Explaining Computers website here in Debian on this RISC-V board. And I do find this still really cool, the fact we've now got RISC-V hardware that's capable of running a full graphical Linux distro. The Neshar is the lowest priced RISC-V computer I'm currently aware of that's able to run a full version of Linux. And it's therefore a very important piece of hardware for RISC-V software development. In a forthcoming video here on explaining computers in a few weeks time, I'm going to be talking more generally about RISC-V in a video called Explaining RISC-V, in which I'm going to discuss how RISC-V may be leading us towards a new era of open computing. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.